Hey everybody, so my day job is building Excel dashboards like this. And I've noticed there's just like a ton of tutorials and guides out there. They're all great, but they really only have five core skills that you really need to have. And it's basically the same across all the tutorials. It's just framed different ways. So I have another video on this topic that you might've seen already, but this one's gonna go a little deeper and give a few more tips and tricks that I didn't include in the first one. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our table of data and decide if the data is better to visualize in Excel or another application. If you're already manually editing and updating your data in Excel, it can make sense to just build your reports and dashboards in Excel too. But if you're getting data from say a database or a structured data connector, it might be time to upgrade to Power BI or Tableau. Now, the big thing here is that your data needs to be clean, single header, no merged cells. And this is super important. It's just like if you're building a pivot table, you need everything to be formatted nice and clean. Take the time to look at your data and really get familiar with it. What data is being reported? How often is it gonna be reported? And what format is it being reported in? And use that to frame the constraints for the type of report that you're gonna build later on. All right, number two is incredibly important and it's learning to use pivot charts and pivot tables. Everything you see behind me comes from a pivot chart or a pivot table. And that's why our filters work. It's why we're able to drill down into different categories of products or different segments and select different time periods. There are hundreds, if not thousands of free tutorials on pivot tables on YouTube or TikTok. But here's the thing, the tip I wanna give you, lay out your pivot tables horizontally so that as your data expands, it's not gonna overlap with other pivot tables and break things. And if we had a pivot table that was gonna to expand to the right and have more dimensions added, we would add padding to that as well. So for number three, let's talk a little bit about design. We are gonna be breaking outside of the grid layout here. So most people are used to Excel looking something like this, rows, columns, individual cells, and they see a dashboard and think it's built by somebody going in and formatting the background color or adding a border or that sort of thing. If we did that, we'd be really restricted. We'd have very rectangular, very boring designs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break everything outside of that cell grid as much as we possibly can. And we're gonna do that by using text boxes, which you can move around instead of putting text directly into a cell. We're also gonna use text boxes for our metrics as well by adding in a text box and in the formula bar pointing it to a cell so that we have the ability to move this metric around as well and format it however we want to. All of our other design elements are made using shapes instead of actually trying to format the grid that's behind all of it. Now, if you wanna test this out yourself, the best way to do it, go into PowerPoint, find a slide you really like, a really cool slide, highlight everything on the page, copy it and paste it into Excel. All of the elements are gonna come over, all the formatting, the styling, all of it, because Excel has all of the same features and how they have almost the exact same UI for doing visual kind of styling and customizations. The key here really is to explore everything under the insert tab, and when you start adding things in, start exploring all of the shape formatting options and in your charts, all of the chart design and chart formatting options. There is way more room to customize things in Excel than people realize. Four is a, the big one. We've alluded to it already, which is using your slicers in your timelines. So it's pretty easy to add these. Just click into any of your pivot charts and under the insert tab, you're going to have a slicer and timeline option. Once you've dropped it in, right click on it, hit report connections and make sure it's connected to all of your pivot tables and pivot charts. And one little note here, it's really good to name your pivot tables so that it's easy to find them later on when you're doing your slicer connections. Now here's the thing, it is really, really challenging to format your slicers and timelines. So I personally just keep a sort of like a style sheet with a bunch of slicers I like and just copy paste them in. If you want a copy of that style sheet, I have a newsletter you can hop on. Uh, you can find it on my profile where I send out free files like that. One of them is a style sheet. So those are the big ones, but there's one other thing. And that's number five, add a T-Rex. I'm kind of kidding here, but a lot of people don't realize if you're on Office 365, you can add in 3D, uh, 3D models. <laughs> so anyway, when, when essentially, when you start stacking all of these features together, you can start to build really powerful filterable dashboards in Excel. And people just don't realize that's possible. Just taking a little bit of time to dig into these features is a really great way to improve your spreadsheets. If you wanna see the build process from start to finish, I have a playlist for that on my profile you can go check out. And if you found this helpful, like this, this post, share it. It really helps. I don't know why, but the algorithm doesn't seem to really like spreadsheet content all that much. I wonder why, but every little bit of engagement really helps to kind of get this into more feeds because I think people really like this stuff. So anyway, thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Have an absolutely wonderful week. See ya.